everyone, and welcome back to ToxCast. Today, we've got Anthony, as we have been having on here, but we have a special guest. We have Ethan, otherwise known as Risky Biscuit. How are you today, sir? Doing well. Glad to be on this uh, podcast. Well, kind of like a podcast, really. we We do what we can. Um, yeah. So today, we are going to be talking about new metal rap rock band Crazy Town um, after the unfortunate passing of Shifty Shellshock uh, felt this was the right time to do this. So we'll just go around here and Ethan, when was the first time you were exposed to Crazy Town in any regard? Now, our exposure to Crazy Town was about 2019 or 2020, one of those years. And I was about 16 at the time, and I was discovering what new metal was. So I went on YouTube, searched around, and there was Crazy Town. I think it was Toxic I heard from them, and I thought, and I like those guys. But obviously, I heard Butterfly and nah, that, but mm. I haven't properly got the album until about Christmas, which my mom got it for me. It's awesome. Yeah, and also Dark Horse as well. Yet, uh, Anthony, when were you first exposed to Crazy Town in any regard? Well, I had okay. So I heard about Crazy Town, you know, a while back. I've heard about them for the past like ten or so years because I used to go on new metal like uh, pages, and they would be mentioned a lot. But the first time I remember hearing a Crazy Town song was the video game Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX 2, which mm -hmm. had the song Toxic on it. And I oh, thought, okay. okay, it was a good song, and mm -hmm. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't think much of it at the time, because, you know, it, uh, it was a good soundtrack. But anyway, um, and then, believe it or not, before I heard Butterfly, I heard the song Pretty Little Diddy by Red Hot Chili Peppers which the sample of that song was used, obviously, for Butterfly. And then I heard Butterfly or Butterfly on the radio, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's pretty good, you know, and they still play it on the radio here. Um, and then, you know, over time, I was like, you know, I really should, like, listen to more stuff. And then I saw a video... This some guy did, which is brilliant. Like I found some guys like uh, like student video he did like for a class he did way back in the two thousands, and he used the song uh, "Dark Side," which I really really liked. So I listened to more and more songs over time, and I was like, you know what, Crazy Town are actually really really talented, and they're really good, really good stuff. Yeah, I tend to think of them as rather underrated. Uh, yeah, Butterfly got them a bad rap. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Per usual, I get to be the old person here. Um, I heard Toxic when it was a single back in late 1999. That's how old I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I remember hearing Toxic on the radio, and even though Dark Side was a single, I never heard that in the radio. So I remember hearing Toxic quite a bit and being like, this is pretty good. Uh, and then Butterfly exploded. Um, and everyone around, like Crazy Town was like the talk of the town for the, that little while. And I, <laughs> being a person who was into harder rock and metal at the time and like kind of mm -hmm. growing into it, I was very against the whole Butterfly. I was like, no, <laughs> we're not doing this. Um, yeah. And it did, it took me a number of years, like I'm thinking maybe 2002 or 2003 when I finally, no, because Dark Horse hadn't come out yet. So maybe early 2002 when I finally kind of buckled down, I was like, you know what, maybe I was too harsh. And so I ended up finding at a record store in the dollar bin, um, mm -hmm. a copy of Gift a Game and I got it and after listening to the whole thing, I was like, oh, I don't love everything here, but there's a lot more here than I thought there was going to be. 
And that was the first time I heard like Dark Side and B-Boy 2000 and stuff like that. Um, and then not too long after is when Dark Horse came out and then the rest is history. So on the topic of that, let us talk about the gift of game. Yes. Uh, so when you first heard all of the gift of game, Ethan, what were your first impressions and how did your opinions change a bit over time? Now, I always saw this album as Meth and Mayhem, but better because even though Meth and Mayhem have like one or two good songs, yeah, most of it sounds kind of generic in the way. But Crazy Town was kind of like that, but better because I felt like it had yes filler, even though Method may have like yes tracks mm -hmm. and you know yes to it it definitely has that a uh, yim biscuit five to it which i enjoy because i love that band as well um my, my opinion hasn't really changed it i pretty much like most of the song except for the 11th one which kind of sound like butterfly but revolving door yeah, that one. Good. That's that was... my least favorite song on the album. <laughs> yeah, it kind of sound like, all right, Butterfly is really popular. We used to do a single so that we can kind of recapture it. Yeah, no, they definitely, that was definitely a deliberate single release. They're like, yeah. what other song on this album sounds like this? Pretty much nothing except for Butterfly and Revolving Doors, and that, that's it. Uh, so what are your what are some of your favorite songs on the album? Oh, let's see. I like um, Dark Side. Mm -hmm. Rat Crowd is pretty good. Uh, I like Owen When You're Drunk. Pretty good. Face Music and Hollywood Babuie. And B-Boy 2000 was pretty cool as well. So I like those tracks. Anthony, what are some of your favorite songs in the album? Oh, man. I really, really love the song they did with uh, Jay Gordon with Orgy, uh, Black Cloud. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's yeah. That's a great song. I really, really love the uh, Alcoholics cover, Only When I'm Drunk. That's a great track. Mm -hmm. uh, Face the Music's pretty cool. Um, of course, Toxic. I think we mentioned that before. Uh, Think Fast is uh, pretty underrated. Um, uh, Lollipop Porn's all right. Um, uh, I of course I love B Boy 2000. That's probably one of the heavier songs on the album. Uh, let's see, Hollywood Babylon's all right, probably my least favorite song on the album. Uh, yeah, uh, Butterflies, uh, as far as my opinion on Butterfly. I like it, but it's definitely not one of my favorite songs off the album. There's definitely better ones. But as a whole, I really enjoy Gifted Game. It's a really, really solid debut from Crazy Town. And I didn't even realize how much of this album, like you said, John, that there's like, like more than you know just the singles. And I really enjoy it a lot, for sure. Yeah, like, as I already stated, I feel uh, Crazy Town off the back of Butterfly got a pretty bad rap. Um, and then they, like, they, the rock and metal community, like, a lot of them turned on him and didn't give him another chance, which is part of the reason I think Dark Horse didn't do as well as it did, plus the shifting tide. Um, I'm going to echo yeah. both of your sentiments. Uh, Toxic is a favorite of mine. Dark Side, I love it. Black Cloud, B-Boy mm -hmm. 2000. I really like Lollipop Porn. I think it's one of those stupid fun songs that they do. Like, yeah. It's like, it's yeah. just got a really good hook in it. Like, yeah. the lyrics are nonsense, which is like half of Crazy Town. Um, yeah. but it's like, it's super fun. Even, um players isn't that bad i think it's fine um even yeah. though they uh, i can't remember what the old song is but they they um they borrow a sample from an old song or either that or the, if yeah. it's not the sample it's lyrics um but and uh butterfly over time i've come to i still don't really i wouldn't say i like it but i don't hate it at this point i'm okay with it it's fine 
And mm -hmm. think think fast is one of the harder songs, and I think that one deserves like the um, the snow job live set that they do where they play in the snow. That mm -hmm. that version oh, of yeah, think yeah. fast is awesome. And yeah. uh, the fact that they got KRS One on B Boy Two Thousand is crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the Jay Gordon fits the vibe of uh, Black Cloud so well. Like he, that chorus is lovely. Um, yeah, with him in there. Mm -hmm. um, but off the back of the Gift of Game, we got Shifty's solo album, and mm -hmm. then we got him guesting with uh, is it Paul Oakenfeld to do Starry Eyed Surprise, and a yeah. lot of people uh, thought that like, oh, this is going to be the new direction of what Crazy Town was going to be. And boy, were we wrong. Um, cause like, do, do you, like, I was just going to kind of skip to dark horse, but do you have any feelings on the shifty solo album or, uh, starry eyed surprise? Well, I think it's an okay out. I mean, it's a solid album. It definitely has a different sound to it compared to crazy town. It sounds more. Is it poppier? Yeah. Poppier, poppier in that. I mean, it's not bad. I definitely enjoy a, a few songs in there. Some I kind of just go, yeah, this is all right. Maybe not my favorite, but I don't mind listening it, to it. It's all not a right. bad single, though. Yeah, Slide Alongside was the single, I think. From mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Work. Yeah. Anthony, did you end up digging into any of the solo album? Yeah, I did. I was actually listening to it right before I got on. Hmm. It's not a it's not bad from what I heard, you know. It's like it's definitely not at all metal. Um I kind of figured as much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh but if I need to listen to something just to chill on a summer day, I can honestly imagine myself listening to more of Shifty's solo album. I could just yeah, like me too. chill. Yeah. It's I, I think that was the vibe that he wanted to give anyway. So I was gonna say like if anybody's going to do a soft summer chill album, Shifty kind of feels like the person to do it. Yes. Yeah, plus, I think on the cover he was standing on the beach on the album. That's so it definitely gives out that vibe. That's fitting, then. Yeah. All right, so let's get into Dark Horse. Uh, Dark Horse came out in 2002. Um, yeah. The lead single was Drowning, and then there was a later follow-up with Hurt You So Bad, which mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember if it was co-written by the Weezer guy or if he just did the guitar solo. Um, I think but, it was the guitar solo. Okay. I couldn't remember if he had any, because that was that weird time where the Weezer guy started sticking his nose in new metal, and it was kind of odd. Like, he helped Cold with that uh, Stupid Girl song. Oh, yeah, he did. Um, and I think there was a couple other instances where he kind of like, like was like either ghost writing or helping bands out. Um, yeah. but what were your first impressions of Dark Horse, Ethan? So it definitely has a more different vibe than Crazy Town, which Crazy Town has a, um, Yim Biscuit sort of vibe. Like this one is more like, um, I don't know if I use this as a parents in Yinkin Park. I can, yeah, because I can see that. That de definitely yeah. doesn't, definitely doesn't have that hip hop fire that they were. The scratchy was gone after like DJ um left the band. Yeah, but I enjoy it. I felt it was a um even better second album than the first one, and I enjoyed the first one. Uh, what were some of your favorite songs on the album, or what? Are some Change was my favorite song, and I like Drowning. I like um, Pretty So Bad. I also like um, Sorry. Yeah, Sorry's a good and I one. Thought, yeah, Beautiful was also a great closing track, and the first one was pretty good, Decorated. Uh, the R2 hidden tracks was all right. The, the only secret track... Well, actually, it's not even a secret track because it's on um, the Hurt You So Bad single, but I like I really like Boombox Gang War. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, one's, that one's stupid fun. I love it. Yeah. Um, 
Anthony, what were your thoughts on Dark Horse? Uh, well, it's interesting. I heard Dark Horse uh, not that long ago, actually. Um, and I have to say that Dark Horse, 100%, I don't even know why I, like, didn't even listen to it for the longest time because this is 100% my favorite Crazy Town album. And I can honestly say that. I love Dark Horse. They went into a more, I wouldn't say serious because there's some still kind of like weird lyrics in here and there. But I mean, it's more serious, but it's definitely a lot heavier for sure. And uh, I really like the direction that they went into. And it's a real shame that it didn't do as good as they th hoped it would because I would have thought it would have made them even more popular but it was you know near the end of the new metal kind of sort of era so i i guess i kind of understand but at the same time there's a lot here that i really really think could easily end up in like uh movie soundtracks or something like that what were uh what were some of your favorite songs on the album oh man decorades great of course, uh, Hurt You So Bad's great. Um, I love, love, love Candy Coated. That's a great song. Candy Coated. Oh, yeah, I like that song as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Battle Cry is heavy as hell. That's a great... That's probably one of the heaviest songs on the album. Yeah, that's definitely one of like the heaviest things they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Beautiful is really good, too. What... I thought was interesting. I don't know if it was either you're the one or them, Dave's. I think it was you're the one. They actually implemented like sort of like electronic rock into their music. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, it was like almost sampled instead of like actually sounding like guitars, which I mean they would do later. Um, but but yeah, no, it was uh, it was an odd. <laughs> Maybe that's why it was a hidden track. <laughs> yeah like an experimental thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry is a good song too. Uh, love Drowning. Um, Wasting My Time's All Right. Um, uh, Take It to the Bridge. Uh, of course, I heard uh, some of the B-sides, like you mentioned, uh, Boombox Gang should have been on the album. I don't know why it wasn't. Yeah, I... I, part of me understands why it wasn't on the album, but they literally, one of the lines is Crazy Town, second round, album number two. Like, literally, you could have had that in the album. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Deja Vu's another great B-side as well. Yeah, Deja Vu's cool. Yeah. Um, I remember being really blown away because like this was around the time where I had finally, as I already mentioned, I finally got Gift of Game and I sat down and I gave it a, a, some proper listening. And so I was fully in the crazy town mindset when Dark Horse came out. And yeah, I was blown away. Like I loved Decorated immediately. Um, and uh, like Drowning had been getting some radio play here. Not a lot, but enough. Um, but Drowning was really cool. But yeah, I love Decorated. Uh, Hurt You So Bad, I kind of just assumed was like going to be another butterfly. But over time, I did grow to really like it. Uh, and to echo Ethan, uh, Sorry is really good. Change is really good. Um, the only song on the album I don't particularly like, and it's not even that it's bad, it just... I don't know, the vibe of it kind of throws me off. It feels out of place is Skulls and Stars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can see that. Uh, like where I feel everything else leading up to and including like Beautiful, everything else kind of has a flow. Mm -hmm. Like it all, like even even a, the dumber songs like Waste of My Time, which is st I still think is a lot of fun. But mm -hmm. I like I like the harder ones too. Like I love Battle Cry. I love Take It to the Bridge. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really good album and felt that this, sh uh, like the Linkin Park comparison is pretty spot on. Like I felt this should have 
pushed them a little further. There were songs that should like drowning should have been way bigger than it was. Um, Mm -hmm. super catchy song, but, uh, it, the timing was just wrong, I guess. And they just didn't have the love that they should have had at the time, possibly once again, because of butterfly, um, or maybe could have even also been like the label, not believing in them. Uh, cause yeah, I, it might be the label not believing them. Cause I do remember hearing that part of the reason that they were dropped and then the subs subsequent breakup was because of the label pressure of why don't we have another bur- butterfly here? Um, mm-hmm. Why aren't you making us more money? All that sort of stuff. Uh, and then, but this was also, also around the time where you saw a bunch of new metal bands kind of starting to do the, we want to be more rock sound like Papa Roach did it with their second album. Limp Bizkit did it with, with results may vary. Uh, Incubus kind of dropped off the new metal vibes from make yourself into morning view. There were there were a bunch of bands who were kind of like shifting this sound. Even a lot of the underground ones are doing it. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, Edema did it too with uh, Unstable. Even though there's new metal stuff on it, they tried to have. There's like more ballady stuff on there too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and like yeah, so a lot of people just I I don't know. There was just there was a lack of faith in Crazy Town when I felt that they they should have gotten more love than they did. Yeah. I mean, it's like the uh, Weathery one where the label was like, all right, you need to make more singles, radio-friendly singles. And they were like, no, we're not doing that. And so they just disbanded because of it. Yeah. Because the label the... was like, oh, you need a pill to 12-year-old girls. And we're like, no, yeah, we're not doing that's that. Not, that's not what we want to do. Yeah. <laughs> we want to have awesome videos where people are breaking wood and skateboarding. Oh, um, yeah, that, that was a fun <laughs> video. Love that video. Yeah, no, the fact that Bleed the Sky wasn't didn't blow up is still mind blowing to me. Cause that yeah. uh, that album is packed to the brim with good songs. Yeah. Um but uh to, to piggyback off something Anthony said, uh you made a comment about how you felt there was a bunch of stuff that Crazy Town did both on the first album and the second album that you should have seen on soundtracks. I didn't know until earlier today when I was doing more research that Crazy Town has appeared on one soundtrack and one soundtrack alone. And it was Orange County with Butterfly. Oh, yeah. Crazy Town feels, oh, yeah. Like, a, Crazy Town feels like a band who you had... They, they would have fit that vibe perfectly on like all those like new metal y soundtracks. You could have put them on not not an R teen movie soundtrack, uh doing some eighties cover. You could have had them on a bunch, but they for some reason, while other bands got exposure for doing that, like look at Power Man five thousand and Orgy. They were on a bunch and it helped Yeah. Them. They were on the, the Dracula soundtrack, Power Man five thousand. Yeah, yeah, Dracula two thousand. Uh, yeah. Orgy was on Zoolander. Actually, they were both on Zoolander. Yeah, they were. Um, and yeah, they were just on a bunch of stuff, and it helped them <laughs> get exposure and stuff. But yeah, Crazy Town, for whatever reason, was not. Yeah. Which I, I don't know. That's it's weird to me. Like that seems like an easy like promotional thing. Yeah, I think I remember there was this animated film called Sing, and it featured um, you know, animals singing and stuff like that. It's a very kids friendly movie mm-hmm. and one of the cows who was singing butterfly and i thought that is a band that would never appear in the kids songs like if there was like pop horn and yeah pop sick, yeah that song would never yeah. appear in <laughs> no <laughs> no like <PG. laughs> yeah because like yeah butterfly even though it is still a little dirty um yeah i think there's like it's to the... it's probably one of the least dirty ones they have yeah, and counting out like the ballady stuff on Dark Horse, um, yeah. but yeah, but like with as far as like their harder stuff, like you could have put them on a lot of those soundtracks, Mission yeah. Impossible stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so after Dark Horse, we had them breaking up, but mm-hmm. then we had uh, is it is it a peak Rust? I can't remember. I Rust. Can't... Yeah, yeah Rust the Peak. He formed Pre Thing. They made an mm-hmm. album, and then he passed away in two thousand four, before mm-hmm. the album even came out. 
Yeah. That was the year I was born, by the way, 2004. Oh, man. Nice. Yeah. So it's weird that I was born the exact same year that he died. It was it was fate. Yeah. Um. Did you have you ever listened to the pre thing album, Ethan? And what are your thoughts um, on it? I think I've listened to it a few times. I haven't listened to it properly because it's not on Spotify for some reason. And what I heard, I think it was War. It sounds pretty good. It doesn't sound like Crazy Town. Obviously, no, no, no. But it does sound good. I might have to check out the full album. Yeah, from what I remember, it's far more of like the uh, a catchier like alternative metal vibe throughout. Yeah. Um, and I know they they had one song that was on a video game soundtrack, but I don't remember which one. I, I would assume a racing game of some sort. Um, Anthony, did you ever listen to the pre thing album? And what were your thoughts on that? Uh, I was actually listening to part of it before uh, I got on. Uh, I have the album. Uh, I don't know where I put it. Uh, I was looking for it last night. Uh, mm -hmm. But I really in uh, like what I heard. Um, it's definitely, I guess, like it's not crazy town sounding at all. But uh, I liked what I heard, and it's kind of like sort of like kind of like a melancholic sounding bands at some points. Uh, like the song, uh, what was it? Can't stop. It's a great kind of like party song in a way. Yeah, can't can't stop is one of the ones that sticks out. The you mentioned war. That's another one that sticks out. Yeah, war's um, good. I don't I don't know if I've ever heard the whole thing, but what I did hear, I liked, and it was it was kind of an of the time thing because it felt like it could have fit in with maybe a lighter version of like breaking Benjamin and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like it was, it was unfortunate that that was him. Um, he didn't even get to see it come out. Yeah. That's a bummer. So then we fast forward a little bit. Uh, there's no crazy town talk for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in 2009, just out of the blue, they both they come back they put a few songs on their myspace page remember that stuff um mm -hmm. and then uh i think it was uh hit that switch hard to get and i think one of the songs ended up on brimstone sluggers yeah my place I think yeah my place my yeah um so they did those three songs and they kind of floated around for a little while and <laughs> then uh after a he survived a plane crash um alongside travis barker i think yeah um really yeah dj am uh yeah he did he survived the plane crash but then uh he i think he overdosed and then passed away in 2009 yes um which was unfortunate because yeah. i i remember yeah. i remember the news of the plane crash coming out but it was probably aided by the fact that Travis Barker was in there, so it made bigger hmm. music news. But like D DJ AM, and I was like, "Oh, the Crazy Town guy." And then, um, but yeah, it was then he passed, and that was super unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and that that was the second Crazy Town guy down. I'm like, oh god, this isn't good. Yeah. Um, and then a number. I think they did a sp like a few sporadic shows here and there. I remember seeing some very uh, lukewarm live versions of some of the Dark Horse songs. I remember them doing Battle Cry Live in this new form, and it didn't sound good. Uh -huh. But it took forever. But then finally in 2015, we had Brimstone Sluggers. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And let it, it, had a, it had a bunch of, uh, I don't remember if it had any real videos. But I remember it had a couple of singles that like people were posting around. Like I remember Lemon Face. I remember Come Inside. Megatron, mm -hmm. I think, was one of the promo songs. Mm -hmm. Um Ethan, what were your thoughts or what are your thoughts on Brimstone Sluggers? Ooh. I'm gonna be honest. I don't really enjoy this track as much. I I, I didn't think it was terrible or anything. I just felt it was Oh, okay. Like there's a few good tracks but most of it just uh nah, skip i nah, skip and there's a white skip i didn't think it was a bad comeback album 
But I didn't really have the five of the Dark Horses nor the five of the first album. It sounds more modernized, I guess. Mm-hmm. Kind of yes. like, yeah. yeah. Which I, I thought wasn't too bad, but I didn't really like it all that much. But it's yeah. an okay album. I don't listen to it as much as Dark Horse or The Gift of Games. Completely fair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I felt I felt there was a lot that was that um, I felt uninspired, um, and you also at the same time felt they were trying to do something different, um, yeah. and maybe like reinvent their name, like like mm. rebuild up some sort of reputation. Mm. Um, and while it didn't work, they did try. Uh, I I have a soft a weird soft spot for Lemon Face, and I couldn't tell you why. I just think it's a super fun song. Mm-hmm. And I also kind of like Come Inside. Um, but as far as a lot of the rest of the album, boy, does it not do very much for me. And as you said, it doesn't sound like a bad album. It's just, eh, this isn't really what I want. Yes. And I kind of yeah. figured by that point, we weren't getting another Dark Horse. Um, but like to even not kind of dip back to more of a gift of game sound kind of was disappointing too. Mm. Uh, like I would have, I would have been fine with a, like a, a kind of nasty, dirty sounding like rap rock album. I would have been, I would have been more than fine with it. Um, uh, Anthony, what were your thoughts on brimstone sluggers? Whatever you've heard from it. I've heard the whole thing. Okay. Um, I have to say that right off the bat, yes, it is my least favorite Crazy Town album. But with that being said, there are still some songs on this that I do enjoy. Like you said, Lemonade's a really good song. Mm-hmm. Uh, look at my notes here. Uh, the Keys is interesting. They had this like girl singer. In some, most of the so- like some of the songs that was an interesting touch. It was like I could get I could kind of tell that they were trying to like mimic sort of like modern pop radio songs. Yeah, they were trying to they were trying to give it that modern pop rap feel almost. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think the whole thing with them having less guitar in the album was a stupid idea. (laughs) Totally. Uh, There should have been a lot more songs. Megatron's probably my favorite song on the album. Megatron is catchy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Backpack's fine. Uh, <laughs> most of the songs are just kind of like, you know, it's like, okay. It doesn't, they don't have enough uh, memorable, like, elements to, like, for me to be like, oh, I love that song specifically. I'm going to listen to that again. They just kind of like, I feel like they kind of like mush together, sort of. They kind of blend a little too much. Some of the, you know, other songs. But with that being said, I do enjoy it. Uh, Light the way is pretty good. Um, uh, my my place is kind of fun. West Coast is mm-hmm. kind of fun. I think the now, interestingly, the bonus track. Uh, I think it was either. I think it was hit that switch. That's probably the closest they had gotten to sounding sort of like, um, I would say, sort of like Dark Horse, but not, in my opinion. Yeah, you know that song? Yeah, because Hit That Switch was one of the original MySpace released ones back in 09. Um, so, so yeah, that one just kind of like, it. somehow it didn't end up on the main album, but yeah, it was a bonus track. But yeah, it still had a little bit of that flavor, not as hard hitting, but yeah, there was there was some elements that still remained, which was cool. But yeah, mm. I I felt there should have been more um for the style that they were doing on the album, it somehow wasn't it didn't stand the te- it didn't stand out. Like things weren't both catchy enough or memorable enough and like there were just a lack of hooks. Like it, it, the it ended up sounding like almost disposable at times. Like it was like in one ear and out the other. Like you just forgot. Yeah. It. Mm-hmm. Like okay, it's nothing, nothing to grab at you. 
Like I, <laughs> I'm not against poppier things. Like some pop stuff's really good, but this, this didn't have like the teeth for it. Like it just wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. Um, I do remember backpack, uh, backpack being pretty. That's one of the slower ones too. Yes. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So we had that one, and then a couple years later, to my dismay, uh, Epic left. Oh yeah, Epic did. Yeah, yep. the band after the third album. Yeah, and then like I was like I was like oh well I don't and then they brought in um. They brought in a couple of people, uh, but most notably Bobby Reeves from Level and later Edema, um, yeah. to to take Epic's spot. Um, then we had like, I think they changed the name to Crazy Town X. Um, they mm -hmm. there was a there was a sprinkling of touring here and there, uh, and then in I think it was twenty I think it was twenty twenty three, they had that big. Uh, publicized fight at the head PE show. Oh yeah, I remember that. Where yeah, where a bloodied Bobby Reeves is getting beat up by Shifty, and then they get kicked off the tour, rightfully so. Yeah. You didn't hear about Bobby Reeves again, and then out of nowhere, in early 2024, "Flirting with mm -hmm. Disaster" comes out. Uh, the yeah. three the three song new EP from uh, Crazy Town, and um. I joked about it when I posted it or after I posted it that I finally decided because uh, everybody kept telling me it was terrible. And uh, I did. I was mostly taking their word for it. But then when I started doing the reaction things on my channel, I was like, I'll do one of the songs. Why not? And then <laughs> the the day after I post the reaction video, Shifty passes away. And I was like, oh, well, that sucked. Um, yeah. <laughs> but but as far as the EP goes, I actually didn't mind it. I thought Cake was pretty good. Um, 99 Bottles is kind of funny. Um, and then I'm forgetting the name of the other song, but the other song wasn't a bit too bad either. And it was the first time... Uh, Trick or Happy, I think it was called? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, it was very nice to hear, even though it, they sounded very uh, programmed, it was nice to hear heavy guitars again. Mm -hmm. Um... But uh, yeah, it was. I was. I was like, oh well, that that's probably kind of gonna be it. That sucks. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can't replace Shifty. Shifty no. was that band. Yeah. No. Now, like, the, who's left to do anything? <laughs> like, um, no. But yeah, Epic's gone. So like, it's like, okay, it's just it's done now. Um, yeah. What were your? Well, let's just let's put it all together. Like, what were your feelings on? Flirting with disaster and the passing of Shifty. Uh, Ethan. Man. Before we talk about flirting with disaster, when I heard Shifty died, I thought, nah, this is going to be a, a joke. But when I actually found out he died, I was like, Christ, holy shit, he actually died. And this was around when I was at Newbie College during mm. break. And when I found out he died, I was like, oh, no. So I messaged my dad saying that the guy from Crazy Town is dead because he was making the T-shirt for me, as you can see right here, using that um special paper that you use on T-shirts oh, and that's that. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. And so, uh, so after he died, I thought, man, this sucks. Yeah. And after I found out about it, I decided... I'm just going to get to the gift for game album while I was cooking in grass. Yeah, that's that's so. Good. No, you can. What were you about to say? Oh, no, you can continue. Okay. So I decided to get to Threaten with Disaster, and I thought this is better than um, the Brigsaw Sucker, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To go out. So at least they went out with a bang. Instead of just a quiet whimper. So I enjoy that. I liked um, Cake. Trigger Happy was fun. Uh, Night Island Bottles was funny and good. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, have you listened to Flirting with Disaster? I have. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? And then obviously the passing of Shifty. 
Okay, well, uh, first off, uh, Cake is a really good, great song. I remember hearing it for the first time, actually, with your reaction. Hmm. Uh, so, and then I heard uh, uh, the second song, which, uh, of course, they tried to be a little more modern again. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it works somewhat, I would say. And 99 Bottles is uh, kind of a weird Kind of going back to that sort of like random silly lyric that lyrics like they had with um, Gift a Game, sort of. I was, it was kind of interesting, but it was as a EP, it was really good. And, you know, it's if they were going to end with that, you know, I think it was a good way to end. Mm -hmm. When I first heard about Shifty Passu, I knew he had. I mean, of course, I I noticed like a couple of years before he passed away that he was like deteriorating, you know, and yeah, it was getting, kind of sad to see. Yeah, losing teeth, getting DUI and stuff, or he got arrested for I think possession of drugs or something. Mm. And I yeah. remember just thinking, you know. I don't know. It was it was really sad to see because, you know, I've actually heard from a lot of people that Shifty as a person was actually a really, really genuine good soul who wanted to help people. That's like he couldn't help himself, but if he mm -hmm. if there was a friend of his that was going through like rehab, he was like the number one he was like the number one supporter and I respect him for that. I really do, and I really wish I could have at least met the guy before he passed away. And then when I heard he passed away, I actually weirdly, uh, I heard from a friend of mine on Instagram who said R.I.P. Seth, and I was like, "Who's who's this guy?" And I looked up his name, Seth, like his actual name. I didn't know his name, real name was Seth. Yeah. Uh, and then it went to you know shifty from crazy town I was like what he actually died mm. like i i know a lot of these people are like oh it's to be expected you know he had a lot of issues yeah but i mean you know you you really hope for someone to like get sober and you know win the game and unfortunately he just it's just really sad it really really mm. sucks he wasn't even 50 you know yeah he was like 49 when he died, yeah. he was younger than my dad. Yeah, same. Mm. So it's just it's it. I was just sad, you know. It's mm. just it really sucks, and you know, I really feel for his family and friends right now, and yeah, mm. I really do. Yeah, um, I I thought it was a troll job at first when I first saw the the posting. I was like, "There's no way Shifty's dead. This dude survived all this stuff, and now it like, and no, he he passed, and yeah, he he had his he had his demons for sure. And but some people, as yeah. you said, some people are just like that. It's unfortunate they they mm. are they are lovely to other people. They're they're the other people's angels, but they cannot get out of their own way. Yeah. Um, you can be your own worst enemy, and it sucks. Mm. I've known people in like in real life like that, and it's bad." Um, and, but yeah, it, for him, like all of his family and friends that, uh, like, I, I hope they all find peace. Like it sucks. It's uh, all of a sudden like just this whole, um, and people seeing people come out of the, like out of the woodwork and like talk about how much they, they loved Shifty and like, despite the rep that crazy town sometime kind of gets like, the people yeah. who loved the music, they were like, they're like, no, no, this, this, I loved this and this sucks. Like is, it's great to see in that regard, but it, like, yeah. Yeah. I wish he had been able to help himself. Yeah. Uh, as, as far as the EP goes, I'm going to echo a lot of what you both just said. Uh, cake was good. Um, and I thought both, uh, trigger happy and nine and balls <laughs> were fun. Um, but yeah, if that's, if that's it for crazy town, I mean, those yeah. first two albums are, I'll love, I'll love them forever. 
<laughs> um, and uh, regardless of Brimstone Sluggers, like I, they less they left a lasting impression on me, and I'm not afraid. I've never been afraid to say that I like Crazy Town, and <laughs> that's been that's been a dirty word, a dirty sentence to say a few times. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like in the same breath of saying that I like Nickelback. Oh, people don't like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Nickelback isn't a terrible fan. People just love to hate them. Yeah, like it's one of those things. Like the, your Crazy Towns, your Creed, your Nickelback, your Incubus. Like, like it, they're easy to pick on bands. Like I, it's stupid. Yeah. Just let, let people like things. Yes. Yeah. Um. But uh, is there anything more you wanted to talk about, Ethan? Oh, man. The floor is yours. You can talk about whatever you like. You know what the weird thing is? Crazy Town never really appeared in too many video game soundtracks. That's I mean, they're also probably... weird. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always thought they were appeared in like games like GTA or Saints Row 2. Well, the first one, actually. The, the energy of their songs, like, as I already mentioned before, it feels like they should be in like uh your racing games or your they were in uh matt hoffman's games like yeah tony hawk soundtracks stuff like that that was like a yeah. little like faster um yeah. yeah and even like or like sports games and stuff like that you could have had yeah. some of the brimstone slugger stuff on like madden or stuff like that with like the yeah. the more hip-hop oriented soundtracks mm. it's uh more wasted potential yeah and you know, it's weird. There's never been any new metal soundtracks in fighting games, even though there's probably some out there, but they never really appeared. Like, obviously, Mortal Kombat has, like, oh, and Mortal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the, yeah, they <laughs> had, uh, uh, was it Mortal Kombat Deception, I think? Yeah, great game. Or, uh, even or, the people, or De Deadly Alliance. Deadly, yeah, Deadly Alliance. Um, yeah. yeah, people always. Ooh, more combat video sucks. Ooh. Like, they're not terrible games. Sure, they might not age as well as like the, the original. Well, actually, the, the original Mortal Kombat we really hasn't aged all that well. No, but they were fun. <laughs> no, um, but no, I have a soft spot for the Mortal Kombat games because the yeah. I was never much of a fighting game person, but I always liked the Mortal Kombat games. Yeah. And the fact that they're just super brutal now, I'm all for it. I love yeah, the yeah. X-ray, X-ray bone yeah. breaking shit. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I would play occasional fighting games, but I'm not like super good at it. I mean, I can maybe be my friends at it, but when I'm against people with great fighting skills, I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna use. Like, that, I've been trying to practice uh, the two games that I got for because I just watch YouTube of them, and it's called uh, King yeah. of Fighters. Oh, okay. And the way yeah. I. And the Movius is like, you had to be a genius to own off Movius of these characters. It's outrageous. Yeah, that's that's kind of the same with me. Like, I I was never against playing them, but yeah. I had friends who were diehards into like Street Fighter, <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom, Tekken, yeah. Soul Calibur, yeah. Jesus Christ, um, and stuff <laughs> like that, where you need to memorize nine or ten button combos. And I would yeah. just. I would just button mash until, and it would make certain people mad. Um, but uh, like, I was like, I was like, I, don't, I, don't I would do the same as well. I was like, oh, just bash with the buttons. Yeah. Or my favorite, my favorite of all of those was actually, and it's, it's debated whether it's a fighting game, but it is, is uh, the Super Smash Brothers franchise. Oh, like, absolutely. I, I have the most. Fun honest, with, I have the most fun. Smash with those. Bros. is a fighting game. It's just different from the normal fighting games. No, I know. Like, but like people like to be like, oh, it's not a real fighting game because it's all cartoon. Shut up. Just play it. Yeah. It's fun, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it has one of the most competitive scenes in fighting. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, I had that was probably the thing I had the most fun with because I felt I had I had felt I had more control over my characters, even though I got still got my ass kicked. But yeah. it was so fun. Yeah. Yes. So it was actually a um fine game I played occasionally, and it's Break War, and it's one of those games where you play as a character that can transform as like different animals and fight each other, and so it's pretty cool. But there's only like five games made. Um, the fourth one pretty much killed off the franchise. That sucks. Yeah, uh, they were good fighting games. Way, way back in the day, there was a game called Primal Rage. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that I think I remember that from the Angry Video Game Nerd with you on the um, was it the CD? Oh, Sega CD or Jaguar? Uh, one of those two consoles. I think it was a CD or the Mega Drive add-on. It, I that, just don't probably, remember the name. it was probably around that that time zone because I I remember being an N sixty four game um and yeah. in the arcade. But yeah, you had dinosaurs and then giant monkeys and stuff like that. And it was yeah. it was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of cool though. I wish they remade it. Yes, yeah. th- like yeah, like uh, I miss that era of games. Even though I do, there are a lot of modern things I love. But yeah, there there was something there was a charm yeah. to those. And you also didn't have five hundred thousand Steam games to try and sift through to find something you liked. Yeah, yeah. that's the truth. <laughs> Yeah, you know, with, the, with the Steam sale on right now, I'm like, oh, there's too much stuff here. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And suddenly, a game might be, oh, this looks good, and a player is like, actually, this is terrible. Why don't I waste my money on this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like the um, Final Fantasy Freddy's games. I oh. remember them oh, yeah. when I was ten years old, and playing them now, I think this is one of those games that would have been popular, and then just. Go, all right. I'm gonna work fresh in the pan things, <laughs> but no, but no, it's still going. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Markiplier. This is your fault. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I mean, they definitely wasn't bad games, but they were like they were they were the first very games. They were they yeah. were very limited. Um. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I thought the first two were actually fun. I actually played the first one. I could never beat it, but. Uh, yeah, the, the last night I always kicked my butt. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I had I had fun with the first two. They mm. were they were scary enough. But what? Yeah, once you started getting for, further into it, it's like, oh, now it's a haunted house. Uh, now it's uh, you're in a kid's room. Oh, uh, now it's uh, sister location. I'm like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> the story is also pretty. Um, oh, I love I love the lore. The lore is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like listening, I listen. And there's a lot of fan games with these games too. Yeah, uh, some good, some terrible. There was one fan game that they did in um, I can't remember if it was VR, but yeah, you could uh, you could like actually walk around like. The, oh yeah, uh, oh, I don't the know the what it's called. Thing. That was cool looking. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, this would I would not want to do this. <laughs> so yeah, walk me, me up. <laughs> I think that was a a fan made game called Deburious, or something like that. That ended okay. up looking like a more hellish version of it. But, um... I know there was a, a litany of copycat games. Like, yeah, some were good. Some were like, yeah, yeah. you definitely try to recreate that. I, I, Mind remember, geez, I saw somebody play a Michael Jackson one where Michael Jackson was just stalking some kid around a house. <laughs> I I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Michael I'm pretty sure Markiplier played it and I'm pretty sure that's how I saw so, it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I no, remember yeah. Michael Jackson appeared in the um, first Palm vs. Solomon game before he was replaced with the um, DJ one. No, not the DJ, the disco one. After oh. he died. Yeah, I played uh, I played Plants vs. Zombies when it first came out forever ago, and yeah. I had fun. With, I think I had it on like the 360. Um, huh. Wow. But yeah, but I had I had fun with it. Um, and yeah, it was you did finally beat it though, right? Yeah, I finally beat it. Yeah, it, it wasn't we all that hard. It just had to be all right. What plant should I place? I should save some of my son for this plant. Yeah, there was it, definitely a moment where I thought, oh, I'm not gonna win, but I just still beat it. Yeah, that's like the trial and error of a tower defense style game. Yeah. All right. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to touch on, Crazy Town wise, Anthony? Uh, uh, I don't have mu- too much to say on the fact. Um, uh, I was re- actually rewatching some live footage of Crazy Town over the years, and you know, I think live. Back in the day, I think Crazy Town should have been received a lot better, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, I've watched the full, uh, as I already mentioned, the Snow Job one, but I've also, the the full Live in Berlin one that floats around from uh, Gift of Game era, where they do, uh, I think that's where they do No Noise, or New Noise. Um, Yeah, they they had a really good live sound. 
Yes, they did. Yeah. Uh, I suppose now is a good time to mention the fact that I should have actually technically seen Crazy Town Live, but I didn't um, because I was at Ozfest 2001. And uh, but at the time, I oh didn't, yeah, Ozfest. Oh, yeah. But uh, I didn't like Crazy Town at the time, so I left. <laughs> So I, I went to go I went to go eat. I could hear them through the Aww. speakers. So technically I could hear them live, <laughs> but uh I wasn't actually watching them. Yeah. Cuz I cuz yeah, we had watched yeah. I feel like watched, booed off the Uh they definitely got booed multiple times. Um and I wasn't the only person to leave. Uh cuz I believe I think they played uh I can't remember if they played before or after Disturbed. I know Bl- I know Black Label <sighs> opened the main stage, but then I can't. Mm. But then it was either Crazy Town or Disturbed, and then it was Papa Roach, Lincoln Park, Manson, Slipknot, Black Sabbath. Um, mm. But yeah, but like I had been I had been on my feet almost yeah. all day, and I was like uh, I was there with my mom, and uh, I was like I was like I'm hungry, <laughs> so we went and go. That was the time I chose to go get food. <laughs> After, after, funny enough, watching mm. all of Black Label Society, <laughs> who I don't like, but uh, <laughs> it was my first concert. I wanted to experience it. <laughs> yeah, I, I also missed uh-huh. Mudvayne that day by accident, but um, yeah, but you know, uh, the live their live presence, especially back in the day, I've never seen too much footage of them during the Dark Horse era. There's a few mm. videos out there. But never, I don't think there's any full shows as far as I know. Um, no. But uh, but yeah, dur- during the Gift of Game era, they had a presence to them and they sounded really good live. Yeah, absolutely. But all right. So that's going to bring us to a close on this episode mm-hmm. of ToxCast. Ethan, thank you for being here. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Discord, um, Twitter. Even though I don't really use it all that much. Nobody should. <laughs> yeah, people on Twitter. Some people on Twitter definitely should get off the internet for a while. Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, and we can. And uh, you, I'll put. Oh, and wait, link. your music as well. Yeah. And uh, I, I will put a link in the description for where you can find him. But yeah, it's all it's all usually under Risky Biscuit. Um, and so thank you everyone for watching and we'll be back soon. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.